provide inputs and experts, and that generates jobs. And if we don't look into that perspective, at the end of the day, international trade is going to have an impact on your wallet. Uh, it's going to have an impact uh, for, from our perspective, from customs, when we talk about Arizona, 60% of the winter produce comes for the country, consuming the country comes through Nogales, through Arizona. If we delay the crossing of that tomato, the shelf life of that tomato goes down and the price goes up and so on. When I was using Jane Doe and Joe Doe, but someone told me that why do I assume that women are the only ones buying the produce? So <laughs> being politically correct, I'm going to say Benito Perez, let's go with that name. In, in Toledo, Ohio, goes and buying a tomato and the tomato went up uh, a dollar. That can be impacted by the work that we do. So as an agency, from to your point, um, Mayor, that's the message that we're starting to, 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 to tailor is, is your jobs are going to be impacted by what happens on the movement of cargo and trade. It's, it's harder. I mean, you, when, when you come here, and I'm, I mean, speaking from the heart, coming, coming from the border, um, when you come here in Washington, we have to, 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 as a government, we represent everybody. So everybody has, it has, we have to put all, all the different areas into perspective. But trade is so, such an important element uh, for the economy and for the jobs that we're changing the message uh, on that part. The third thing I want to mention, you mentioned U.S.-Mexico, very important. And, and, and I want to bring into here also U.S.-Canada because um, that's another meeting the President had with, with Prime Minister Harper and we're working very close on different implementations. And it is, um, it is really a, 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 a true partnership in terms of how are we going to look at the North America economy and the North America perspective because it, it is, we have to remain competitive when we, do all of you know what maquiladoras are? Everybody? No? Some, some, I, I know. I know, I know yes. <laughs> so from the border from us, maquiladoras are like, um, ev yes, every day, every day. Maquiladoras are plants, are industri industrial manufacturing plants that are open in Mexico where we bring the raw materials going to the maquiladora on the Mexican side without paying duty, uh, a good is put together and then is sent back to, to the United States. And so maquiladoras are, there are a lot in Mexico all along the border. It's a big economic development. You have foreign trade zones too. I'm not gonna complicate all, all on that part. But we have, to give you an idea, we have parts that, that build uh, automotives that move sometimes up to 36 times between Canada, US, and Mexico, go back and forth. And therefore why the movement of the cargo along the ports of entry is so important for the economy because these companies depend on just-in-time delivery. Um, so I'm going all over the place in that, but to, 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 to finish on, on your point, uh, Mayor, it, it takes a lot of us educating, and, and that's something that, that with the Department of Commerce we're partnering on how do we go and do more outreach and multiply the event. But to the point of the Mayor, uh, too, from, from Nogales, the community has to start to and help on that part. It is it is very important um, to, to to have that 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 concise message uh, on that area. And, and we are and we're open to collaborating with you. So if feedback, suggestions, please contact us. And um, for your event um, on September 23rd, if there's someone that we can get out there from our, we have local U.S. export assistance centers across the United States, 109 locations. I believe Eric Nielsen is out in Arizona. If we could get him out there to participate in your in your working group meeting, we would love to participate in those things because it is, in the end, it's about the economics, it's about the jobs, and, and making sure that we do get this message out about, about the border being, being open for business. It's good. Tell them we're going to have burritos and machaca. I will love <laughs> It's going to be a breakfast. It's going to it's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a las 10 de la mañana. So these issues are fascinating to me, I, and I have huge respect for NDM and the work that Simon did in telling me the statistics on crime this morning were new to me. But I commend the administration that you're all work on, on this issue, but it's a huge perception problem, mm -hmm. and it's not just a local sheriff. I mean, a year ago, I heard Hank Crompton, the famous CIA agent, discuss after the inevitability of a terrorist attack, a nuclear attack in our lifetime, that the Mexican situation was the most scariest issue that he thought that exists in the United States today with the drug trafficking. And, and so it's a big issue. So you have a huge perception problem. It sounds like you've done incredible work. 
can you partner with stakeholders on a communications plan? Obviously, the president of the Uber celebrity is a little bit busy these days, but can you can you partner to get stakeholders, maybe with the help of an NDN, to get a real communications plan of of ads and celebrities and events? Because um, changing this perception is going to be, as you know, incredibly difficult, and I think you have to use a lot of a lot of communication techniques that I just don't see, and I'm I'm fairly close, literally in San Diego, and a lot of this is news to me. So, so if I may, just just from from our side, and I I will ask you to please repeat that question to to my boss this afternoon, <laughs> because he will give you an answer. But it is a big challenge. I, I mean, you we we do understand, and it is uh, what Mexico is going through right now is historic. Uh, in terms of, of the situation that they're facing. It is not, that has never been denied. It, it is a big challenge that our, 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 partner, uh, our partners are, are living in Mexico. It's also something that cannot be denied that President Calderon has really taken the bull by the horns. Uh, and I, I wish I could use other terms, but I have to be politically correct. <laughs> no. no, but he has really taken the bull by the horns on fighting crime in Mexico, and therefore why we have seen such violence. The challenge with the communication piece is we live in a 24-hour news cycle uh, process and, and, and what, what can be sold or not, but that is something that we're looking at, uh, at least from our perspective, from, from Customs and Border Protection, very important element for us because we have a lot of investment, a lot of resources that have been put along the border to facilitate, and we also are working through Plan Merida uh, very closely with the Mexican government in training, in doing a lot of stuff that are working. But there are sensitivities too that we have to be aware of for Mexico uh, in terms of how do we communicate that part. And, and that's, that's another, uh, another stone, as you know, they're, they're also starting an election uh, next year. But it is, point well taken, I would love to, to see how, how um, our commissioner, uh, my commissioner responds. But it is something that we're looking at as, 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 a, as an administration, but it is, it is a challenge. Um, and from different and I think you're exactly right in terms of engaging with stakeholders, and the private sector is, is a key part of that in getting the message across that Mexico is an important trading partner, that there are opportunities there. Our undersecretary is taking a, a group of companies, I think there are 20 companies that will be going to Mexico City in just um, a week and a half, uh, to talk about renewable energy and energy efficiency and how we can open up that market within Mexico. and, and, and so. You have companies like GE, well, I probably shouldn't say all that. I have actually not cleared which companies we can say that are going down there. But we have major corporations, U.S. corporations going down there, small and medium-sized businesses going down there. But how can we work with the private sector to help get that message across? Because they're the ones that, are, that, that see the opportunities. And so, um, if, if, again, open to suggestions and ideas, and I would really love to continue this conversation with you. I think it's short. I uh, just want to say one thing. Um, you should view us as a resource. I mean, if you have, you're having an event, if you're, if someone, if you're speaking or someone else is speaking, and you need information about it, I mean, we're all up here. We're all doing a lot, and so I, I, if we have your help to know where we can come and participate in a conference or provide you with information that that you might be able to use to talk about either what, whether it be you know the, the customs, the security, whether it be exports, whether it be the you know the significance of that, we have a lot of information that you yourselves can disseminate as, as leaders in your communities, in, in addition to having um, some of our sort of principals come out there and and present at an event or speak or just meet with people and sit down. I mean, we're, as, you, as you've heard already, we're doing a number of going to El Paso Las Cruces, going to Mexico, we've already been to San Diego. I mean, it, people are going out there, we're doing a lot of work. So I think if you tell us where we can best plug in, I think that's a really practical way to just proceed and say, Here, we're having this event. You should feel free to, I think, reach out to any of us in the panel. As a follow-up, you, know, you should get someone to do a TED talk and go to TED, mm -hmm. which has become one of the most modern ways of disseminating ideas to people who have influence. I mean, either the president of Mexico, someone should go in front of TED in February and make make this case, mm -hmm. because that's one. You know, you know uh, one, one of the things uh, that, uh, Mayor was talking about earlier was uh, the political <coughs> football. You know that uh, that all of these things become political footballs, and everybody has them. But as the closer you get to the ground, the more you realize that people are working together. 
I think that's especially true in the public private partnerships. It's one of the things. Like there are a lot of things we, we, we are agreeing on in Washington. The, the president signed a patent bill today. Uh, he sent a, 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 a jobs bill to Congress. Uh, we're going to work on a, on, a, on a package of trade agreements and trade adjustment assistance. Uh, there's some bipartisan agreement there. I'd like to talk about a little bit, and Simon, I know, uh, wanted to jump in, but uh, about the, the work that the, the, the public-private partnerships uh, and within some of the folks uh, who are working for companies and also for uh, the Ecos Kovach from uh, the Southeastern Arizona Governments Association. If anybody wants to talk about how you're partnering uh, not only across governments, but <coughs> across government and the private sector to, to get to get jobs. Going. I just want to jump in for one second, we, just so you guys catch up on stuff we talked about this morning very quickly, is that part of the argument we made to get Cliff up to speed on all these things this morning is that the 21st century border strategy of this administration has been one of the greatest success stories in the Obama administration. Uh, all the good, more good things are happening and fewer bad things are happening. And I think just what we, part of the reason we're all here is the Ford Foundation has given us a lot of money to go tell the story that it's not millions and millions of dollars that it's going to get place. And I think that it's, up, it's incumbent, one of the things that I'm most proud of is that, and Mayor Verino is aware of this, is that the, the Border Mayor Association is now actively pushing back against the extremists in their states who are exaggerating and mischaracterizing what's really going on here. And it's going to take us here, doing our part, but it's going to take new levels of organization, political courage, frankly, mm -hmm. in these individual states, particularly Arizona, where there's probably been the most extreme yes. sort of uh, rhetoric of all of, of all the border states, but what Perry I was going to say is, is in many ways, you know, he's being characterized as sort of a moderate immigration. He's nuts on the border stuff, and there's a difference, right? I mean, he's got a nutty set of positions on the border. I believe there is, be, this is the beginning clip. I mean, what you're a part of, is, and, you're, and we would love your ideas. I mean, Indiana sort of right now is an outside actor who is perhaps has more agility at some times than the bureaucratic mechanisms of the administration is working on this. So we're very open to ideas, but there is a lot happening on the ground. Uh, you know, the San Diego Chamber is one of the leading institutions in this country pushing back on the narrative that you're, you're a bad narrative. Tremendous, able leadership in your chamber. I just want to say for their, for their benefit, um, I do think that at some point the administration has to appoint a, a, a single human being who is responsible for engaging in this day to day. I mean, there is an enormous number of stakeholders in the administration. There isn't a person who gets up every day thinking about how to push back on this narrative. Uh, where they would sit, I think it has to be in the White House. That's important. I think that's, uh, that makes a lot of sense, Simon, uh, and, and hopefully that comes to fruition. I think also what's important is um, sustainability. So even even with the perception of everything that's going on, you have businesses that are growing. Um, I think that more and more people are taking management into their own hands and starting their own businesses. Uh, at least I don't have the statistics, but that's my perception. I think uh, Mayor Art, Art, uh, Art um, Mayor, you mentioned it. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, and um, businesses are growing. Okay, so again, it goes to the resources, uh, it goes to the education, the access and opportunity. But as this business, businesses are growing, they're hiring two or three people, sometimes 10, you know, we want to sustain those, those jobs. And I think um, utilizing you all as a, sorry, my text came out. Um, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> my, uh, my sister lives in Virginia, says so don't say y'all, stop saying that here. <laughs> so you'll get identified right away. Um, we can use you as a resource. Maybe. Yes, thank you, Carlos. Uh, you said, um, uh, Laura, about using you all for if we were to have, like as uh, John was mentioning, they had that reverse trade mission. If we could get someone from the administration there, in addition to that, they'd probably triple. Yep. You know, that would be great if we could do that. I mean, that would be <coughs> awesome. And, and we, we have tremendous resources. Uh, we're, we're a small organization at the International Trade Administration, but we do have resources. Where we, we um, last year I think we had over 30 trade missions that went with some people across the world. 
um, and in a variety of sectors. And we, we do certify reverse admissions as well, so we would be happy to work, help work with you. You know, on if that. we needed to do provide some funding to help pay for the costs, and we may, you know, we might be able to do something. Okay. Great. Well, so if please we can have your contact information on that. Laura.Matkis at trade.gov. You don't have a card easier. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do, actually, this was a, a, I raced out of the office, and I apologize. I do not have my card this morning. But I've asked Carlos if we can get okay. the okay. list Simon's of everyone who's in attendance, okay, and we'll send out our contact information back to the group and also some information on the, the International Trade Administration, some of the programs that we offer, great. and, and great. some money and Luisa would like to do the same. Yep. The, second thing, the second thing was we probably would not hurt if we had a, um, a letter signed by all the border mayors and the U.S.-Mexico uh, borders, uh, border mayors uh, conference or uh, affiliate. Because right now the governor of, of Texas, Rick Perry, has a big audience right now, and he's <laughs> constantly bashing the border, specifically El Paso. And uh, I know El Paso is trying to figure out how to, to overcome that. But I think if you had mayors from San Diego all the way down to, to Laredo, Brownsville, um, there's like 17 of, of us uh, and saying, denouncing him, because you know he just he just starts off the, doing his thing, and I think he needs to kind of calm it down a little bit there. If I could uh, change gears a little bit, uh, because we're, I'm talking about the time, uh, and save one of the more uh, exciting topics for last week is education, which is something that the president uh, has talked about constantly. Uh, he's laid out a blueprint for reform. He's uh, just this morning, uh, Secretary Duncan and some other folks are announcing uh, this brand new uh, effort to uh, get more high tech uh, tools into classrooms. Uh, I want to acknowledge Gary Jacobs, who's been a visionary leader. Uh, high tech high has been on our radar for a long time. They were one of the finalists uh, for the Race of the Top Challenge. Uh, missed it by a hair, I think. <laughs> but you look at the school, you see the video. It doesn't look like a. It doesn't look like a high school. It doesn't look like the school I went to. Uh, glass walls, people working in groups. It's really inspirational. And um, uh, I want to uh, first acknowledge you. Thank you, guys. I uh, thank all the students who are here and I ask, uh, what can we learn from High Tech High? And what are the things that we can we can take from there? The good models that we can export to other 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 schools. Um, and. Uh, ask some of the students their experiences. Um, well, I think one of the things that we learn at High Tech High more than any other place that I can think of or any high school in the U.S. is communication. Um, because like you said, we work in groups. All of our rooms have huge windows. Nobody's isolated when they're in a class. Nobody sits alone. You sit at big round tables and you talk about everything you do and that carries over to every aspect of life in the end, it, it can be related to all these border relations we're talking about, you know, people having misconceptions. It's because we don't communicate enough and it's because people aren't communicating with each other and understanding each other in the right way. And that's what we learn is to work with people, to understand different people, to understand backgrounds and to overcome that. And that is a real world practice. And that's what, that's what the school is about is real world. so fascinating 
and I'd love to do a project, um, Brett and Melissa, on this, you know, figuring out why and how we could use, we have laptops in every single classroom, and how we could use the social media to really um, change, this, change this conception to something more positive about the Mexico and U.S. treat industry and about our borders. Yeah, so so the things everyone's mentioning about application communication, all of those are really tools that are um, or values that are instilled throughout the schools that really empower us to do something more than the traditional high school student. Um, so just to explain kind of why we're here, um, each of the high tech highs. Uh, schools have an internship program where we are fully immersed in some sort of company or organization purpose um, and and really get to understand the field um, you know put our feelers out for what we might want to do in the future um, and, it, and it really has opened up opportunities for me I know for everyone else in the room and uh, you know listening to the problems here they really tie in because um, using those skills, there's there's going to be somewhere or someone that can really make a difference because of the programs that High Tech High has implemented and really instilled through us. So. I think that when you look at <coughs> when you look at a High Tech High student and a typical public school student, um, when you do that juxtaposition and you look at the <coughs> the real world applications, specifically in the workforce. The internships that we do at our school usually give us the first step forward. So, a lot of the projects and a lot of the curriculum that we do is relevant, like you said, but it also teaches us how to be pretty much like adults. We have a lot of freedom at this school. You know, we don't have our teachers policing us. You know, when we get assignments, it's up to us. And we always get it done. So I think that teaches us uh, attributes of how to be successful in the world. And all, all of the projects that we do have been praised by adults that have come to the school. So well, I, I can tell you that uh, I've been in a lot of things. Did they court? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are yeah. a close second. <laughs> you're talking about adults. I'm going like, no, Tiger. <laughs> no. I'm, I, I'm His totally operative good. words were, just get it done. Just get it you done. Know? And I think that's where a lot of our, our adults don't get it. Because we exactly. don't get it done. You just give yourself what you need. That's why I'm so happy to listen to you guys, because I know I have a problem here. I don't know exactly how to solve it, but I'm glad it's on the floor. I'm glad that these guys are coming. And, 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 and the president talks about career and college readiness. It's, that's the major focus. The, the president and Secretary Duncan are going to be talking about, all right, con we, we gave Congress a lot of time to work on, on No Child Left Behind, fixing that. Let's see what we can do administratively. We're doing the same thing on immigration. Uh, but you guys are talking, going a step further, how can I be ready to be a good citizen? You know, how can I be an engaged person who's not letting life happen to me, but, but actually taking it by the horns, uh, as somebody said earlier. Um, uh, but I know I'm, I'm cognizant of time here, and uh, I know we want to give uh, you guys some awards. Uh, uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Simon. Yes, absolutely. But just one thing, I, I am inspired by all of you. Thank you so much for continue doing it. Never allow anyone to tell you you cannot do anything, because you can't. Um, one thing, in, in customs, we're starting to look at creating a career. We're working with partnering with universities to do a career for customs because we don't have professionals that understand the business of international trade. Hmm. There's different courses, but not a whole profession. So one of the universities we're looking at is San Diego State University, and Mr. Gonzalez was in our last meeting uh, where we're going to be come up with a four-year degree, et cetera, and internships. I, I really would love to touch base with the high school because you s I see a lot of potential in there, but I think it will be a great experience for you guys to understand uh, the trade side of, of, of business. And, and I would love what whoever here in the room give me your card so we can we can have that conversation, because I think that will be a great opportunity <coughs> for you guys. And, and I'm sorry we didn't get enough time to talk to, I read some of the stories for about Kizui and uh, Rocky Mountain Youth Corps and Calat 2 at UCSD. Very expiring programs. I hope uh, over the course of the day that you guys can can, can hear about it. Uh, but uh, 
they're all models for what we should be doing. And so, turn it over to the. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 say, I hope all the mayors uh, meet will be the set up high tech highs. They just have to pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> So Maybe we can repatriate some of the Mexican drug money. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's the joke. <laughs> Simon. So Simon, just, we, we, just we, one we, thing. Yeah. You know, when you mentioned right now communication, that is, is so important. Uh, this is just a, so you guys can get a chuckle. When I, uh, when I was uh, uh, about two weeks into my term this year, I, uh, I had my assistant call the governor's office so that I could meet with the governor to offer my assistance at the border, not a handout, just my assistance. Uh, they sent me back a questionnaire. I had to fill out a questionnaire to meet with the governor, the mayor of Nogales, you know, you would think she would want to meet with me. Up to now, she hasn't asked me to go mm -hmm. see the, the governor. So that's where, you know, she's at the top. She's the one that should find out, you know, what's going down at the border, what, you know, our, our, our efforts are international. When you're a mayor of a border town, it's not like being the mayor of Phoenix or Tucson. You're international. What happens in Nogales, Sonora, affects you in Nogales, Arizona. So, I, you know, I'm going to help her out. And uh, I have to fill out a questionnaire to, to well, see the lady. I learned a lot by listening. Uh, to yeah, you guys, but it's true. Girls. You know, when it comes, yeah, when it comes very, to... Very busy, so I just want to uh -huh. say the next part of the program is we're actually going to award the official champions of change certificates, right, from the White House. And so, Carlos, thank you for being part of this. I'm going to turn it over to Alicia and Julia who will do this with Carlos. But thanks to you, everybody. That's all. Thank you. So the official White House photographer decided that they thought these photos would be even better at the old executive office building. But we're going to take some photos, if that's OK with that you, great. for our purposes. So if when I call your name, you can step down. Do you guys mind standing up so we can just do Shot. Seth, do you have my camera? I do. Um, we're just going to take some photos over here, and then we are going to repeat the charade over at the EEO. <laughs> so, um, champions, thank you all for being here today. Um, Melissa Agudelo.
Mayor Ken Miyagashima. For my friends at High Tech High, I have this little thing I put as a border. Kind of hold it real straight. Good project. John Munoz. Got to improvise. <laughs> Get his head off, Mayor. Send a photo to us. Surely. Yeah, sure will, huh? They're going to film it and they send it and they're going to get Obama's picture in there and it's like two. Rashika Daranani. And for those of you that saw the commencement video, Rashika was the chair last year who put together the video as well as the entire application package. So, Dimitri Gulas. 